Hello everyone. This tutorial will be about understanding the last method for measuring high voltage. This method is called sphere gaps measurement. One of the efficient methods which can be used for measuring the amplitude of high voltage is sphere gap measurement. Also, it's called spark gap. So, what is the construction of sphere gap? The sphere gap is formed of two metallic spheres of equal diameters and separated by a limited distance. So, D is the diameter of the sphere gap. Also, the separation between the two spheres is called S, which is the separation between the two spheres. There are two common arrangements for the construction of the sphere gap in the lab. The first arrangement is vertical arrangement, where the upper sphere represents the high voltage electrode and the lower sphere represents the low voltage electrode. And it's usually earthed. The second arrangement is horizontal arrangement, where also one of the sphere is connected to high voltage supply and the other one is earthed. Now, we should understand what are these parameters A, D, S, and B. D is the diameter of the sphere, S is the separation between two spheres, but A is defined as the height of the sparking point B above the horizontal ground plane. B is defined as the minimum clearance around the spheres within which no objects such as walls, ceilings, transformers, or supporting frameworks are allowed. These parameters or these values, which is A and B, are defined to make a uniform distribution of electric field between the two spheres. Also, the parameters A and B are related to the sphere diameter D and the separation between the two spheres according to this table. Let's see an example. If the sphere diameter is 62.5, so the minimum value of A should be 7 times of the sphere diameter and the maximum value of A should be 9 times of the sphere diameter. Also, the minimum value of B should be 14 times of the separation between the two spheres. Now, let's understand how sphere gap is used to measure the high voltage or the applied high voltage. Let's see the steps. First, when the unknown high voltage, which needs to be measured, is applied to the high voltage sphere, while the other sphere is grounded, like that, Adjust the spacing between the two spheres by moving the lower sphere up and down until breakdown occurs in air between the two spheres. When breakdown occurs between the air between two spheres, the breakdown voltage of the sphere gap with a diameter D and a spacing S are summarized in standard tables like that. This table represents the relation between the sphere gap spacing and sphere diameter and the breakdown voltage of the air between the two sphere the two spheres for a given spacing s and a sphere diameter d the unknown applied voltage can be obtained from the standard tables how it can do that let's see an example if we want to measure an unknown high voltage. So we use sphere gaps in measurement and we adjust the sphere gap separation to make breakdown. The breakdown occurs at separation 30 millimeter while we use spheres of diameter 12.5 centimeter. Thus from the table with a separation equals 30 millimeter and sphere diameter equals 12.5 centimeter so the unknown applied high voltage will be 85.5 kV from the table and note that this voltage is a peak voltage since the sphere gaps measure the peak voltage not RMS voltage. Now let's see the most important requirements of the spheres which are used in our sphere gap measurement. First, the spheres should be carefully manufactured with a smooth surface and a uniform curvature to make a uniform distribution of 
electric field between the two spheres. The spheres should be free from irregularities in the region of the sparking points because these irregularities will make non-uniform distribution of electric field and the breakdown voltage will not be accurate. Spheres should be refinished or replaced if they become excessively roughed or bitted in use. Also, the humidity shouldn't exceed 90%. If it happens, the moisture will condense on the surface and the measurement will then be non-accurate and the breakdown voltage will not be accurate or the unknown applied high voltage which needs to be measured. So, this is important requirements of the spheres that are used in our method. Now, let's see the advantages of sphere gaps in measurement. It's used to measure DC, AC, impulse voltage, and it doesn't depend on the voltage waveform. As we see, it also depends on the spacing between the spheres, also the sphere diameter, and it also depends on standard tables. So, it gives very accurate readings. So, it's used for calibration of voltmeters and other measurement methods. So this is the most efficient method that can be used for high voltage measurement. Let's see disadvantages of sphere gaps. First, continuous record can't be obtained because we uh, obtain values from the table. If the value is not mentioned in the table, we will use interpolation. Also, the reading affected by atmospheric condition like pressure, temperature, and humidity, and we should overcome this problem in the next lecture we will overcome this problem so that's all about sphere gaps measurement the most efficient method for measuring high voltage